Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck and we're playing a red-white equipment deck featuring Akiri, Fearless Voyager as our commander, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three core warrior saying whenever we attack a player with one or more equipped creatures we get to draw a card and for a single white mana we can unattach an equipment from a creature we control and if we do we have to tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. So a nice way to protect our creatures and to make sure we can keep attacking and drawing those extra cards. And the beautiful thing Thing about this Brawl deck is that we can easily swap out Akiri as our commander with Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, as both cards share the same synergies. Nahiri, a 4 mana, 4 loyalty planeswalker, the plus 1 makes a 1 1 white core warrior creature token, and we can attach an equipment we control to it. The minus 2 lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library. We can reveal a warrior or equipment card from among them and put it into our hands. And then the minus 3 says Nahiri deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment we control. So Nahiri has a ton of utility, but for the most part we're just going to be using the plus one ability to keep making more tokens and potentially moving some equipment around. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with the equipment. And we do want to be playing a lot of cheap equipment that are easy to play and move around, because Akiri does reward us for potentially unattaching those equipment with the white ability. So we don't want to spend a ton of mana re-equipping them. So at one mana we've got Kite Sail, which equips to a creature right away as we play it, giving the equipped creature flying. So that's also very useful with Akiri, as it guarantees that we can keep attacking with our creature unopposed and drawing additional cards. And then it costs two mana to move the Kite Sail around afterwards. We also have Shadow Spear, 1 mana to play, 2 mana to equip, giving plus 1 plus 1, Trample and Lifelink, and we can also potentially remove Hexproof and Indestructible from the opponent's permanence. And Short Sword is 1 mana to play, 1 mana to equip, giving plus 1 plus 1. Then at 2 mana we've got Crystal Slipper, which gives the equipped creature plus 1 plus 0 and Haste, and it only costs 1 mana to re-equip. Relic Axe is a 2 mana equipment, and when it enters the battlefield we can attach it right away, giving plus 1 plus 1, but if it's a warrior we get to give plus 2 plus 1 instead, and we do have a decent amount of warriors in the deck, and then it costs 2 mana to re-equip afterwards. And then Wings of Hubris, another flying equipment, 2 mana to play, 1 mana to equip, gives flying, and we can also sacrifice Wings of Hubris and then the creature becomes unblockable until end of turn, so that's useful to maybe get in the last points of damage if the opponent has a flying blocker. And then moving up the curve, we have a Maul of the Skyclaves, 3 mana to play, attaches to a creature right away, giving it plus 2 plus 2, flying and first strike. It does cost 4 mana to re-equip, so it's not something we'll often unattach with Akiri, but the effect is undeniably powerful. And then last but not least, we've got Ember Cleave, 6 mana to play, but it's 1 less to cast for each attacking creature we control. We can play it at instant speed and equip it to a creature right away, giving it plus 1 plus 1, double strike and trample, and then it's 3 mana to move around. Next up, let's take a look at all the creatures in the deck. And once again, we want to be playing a lot of cheap creatures that are easy to deploy, so we can quickly put some equipment on them and start drawing extra cards with Akiri. And having evasive abilities is also plus because that makes it easier to keep attacking. So at 1 mana we've got Fairy Guide Mother, a 1-1 flyer, but we can first use the Adventure giving a creature plus 2 plus 1 and flying until end of turn. Venerable Knight is just an aggressive 1-drop, a 2-1 that when it dies puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target Knight we control, and we do have a small Knight sub-theme in the deck. Fervent Champion another Knight, a 1-1 with First Strike and Haste, and when the Fervent Champion attacks we can give another attacking creature plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and equip abilities we activate that target Fervent Champion costs 3 less to activate, so it's very cheap to put some equipment on the Fervent Champion, so that also synergizes nicely with our commander. Fireblade Charger, a 1-1 Goblin Warrior, and as long as the Charger is equipped it also has haste, and when the Charger dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so also gets rewarded for potentially increasing its power with various equipment. And then Ginger Brute, a 1-1 with haste, and for single white mana, Ginger Brute cannot be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste, and we can also potentially sacrifice it to gain a bit of life. Then at 2 mana we've got Hushbringer, since we were not playing a ton of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, so that potentially shuts down some of the opponent's creatures, and at the same time we get a 1-2 flyer with a lifelink, so those are some nice stats if we can put an equipment on it. Then Core Blade Master, 2 mana for a 1-1 double strike, giving equipped warriors we control double strike, and we do have a few warriors in the deck, of course Akiri is a warrior as well. Then we've got Luminarch Aspirant, 2 mana for a 1-1 Human Cleric, and at the beginning of combat we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so this is just a powerful 2-drop that you can play in any wide brawl deck pretty much. 
Next up we've got Pack Leader, 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two dog, giving other dogs plus 1 plus 1, although it's the only dog in the deck, but the reason we're playing it is that when Pack Leader attacks we can prevent all common damage that would be dealt to it, so we can equip it and then keep attacking with it without fearing any repercussions, and we can potentially start drawing extra cards with Akiri that way. Then a Seasoned Hallow Blade, 2 mana for a 3-1 Human Warrior, and we can discard a card, tap the Seasoned Hallow Blade and give it Indestructible until end of turn. So this has great synergy with Akiri, since we can keep fueling the Hallow Blade's ability by drawing extra cards with Akiri, and then it's also a warrior for potential warrior synergies, like the Core Blade Master. Then Amberth Shieldbreaker can first be used to destroy an artifact, and then we get access to a 2 mana 2-1 two Human Knight, and again we've got a few Knight synergies in the deck as well. Cargan Intimidator, 2 mana for a 3-1 Human Warrior, saying Cowards cannot block warriors, and then it has a nice set of abilities for 1 mana, can give plus 1 plus 1, target creature can become a coward until end of turn, and target warrior gains trample until end of turn. Then we've got Rimrock Knight, 2 mana for a 3-1 that cannot block, but we can first use the Boulder Rush Adventure, giving target creature plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, and once again a knight for the knight synergies. And Robber of the Rich, another powerful 2-drop, a 2-2 with Reach and Haste that can provide virtual card advantage when it attacks the opponent if they have fewer cards in hand. Then at 3 mana we've got a Claimed Contender, a 3-3 Human Knight, that when it enters a battlefield, if we control another Knight, we can take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, and essentially reveal a Knight or Equipment card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom, the other card types aren't super relevant in this deck. And then Skyclave Apparition, a creature that also doubles up as a removal spell, as a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield can exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost 4 or less, but when the Apparition leaves the battlefield if the opponent does get a blue illusion token with power and toughness equal to the card's converted mana cost. And then Bone Crusher Giant can be used as removal first with the Stomp Adventure, and then gives us access to a 4-3 creature. And then last but not least, we've got a Relic Robber, which also pairs quite nicely with all the flying equipment in the deck. It's a 2-2 creature with haste, and when Relic Robber deals combat damage to a player, that player makes an 0-1 a colorless goblin artifact creature token that cannot block, and says at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals 1 damage to you, so that will slowly but surely kill the opponent as well. And then taking a look at some of the other cards in the deck, We've got a Resolute Strike, a 1 mana instant, giving a creature plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and if it's a warrior we can attach an equipment we control to it. Then we've got Shock as a cheap burn spell, dealing 2 damage to any target. Spikefield Hazard can be played as a tap land or as an instant, dealing 1 damage to any target and potentially exiling it. Then we've got Glass Casket, 2 mana artifact that exiles a creature with convert mana cost 3 or less. We've got Fire Prophecy, dealing 3 damage to target creature, and we can potentially put a card from our hand on the bottom of our deck, and drawing a card at the same time. Then a Royal Eruption can deal 3 damage to any target, and we can also kick it to potentially deal 5 damage. Thundering Rebuke deals 4 damage to target creature or Planeswalker at sorcery speed. Arcane Signet can help us ramp. Then we've got Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can also play as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life, or as a sorcery dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers, and if X is 6 or more it deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead. Then we've got Banishing Light, which can exile target a non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. And then Emiria Skull is also one of those mythic rare lands that we can play untapped at the cost of 3 life, or we can cast it as a 7 mana sorcery making 2 4 4 white angel warrior creature tokens with flying, and non angel creatures we control gain indestructible until end of turn. So, another powerful finisher. And then quickly going over the mana base, we've got a few castles here with Castle Ardenvale to make 1 1 tokens, and Castle Emberth to pump the team, 7 basic planes, 7 basic mountains, and then a few dual lands here with the Needle Verge Pathway, Temple of Triumph, Windscarred Crag, Command Tower, and Fabled Passage. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Rada, Heart of Kelts, so maybe a red green landfall synergy deck. And we've got a fine opening hand. Fetch up a mountain, turn one. Essentially have three lands in hand. And then a nice mix of creatures and equipments. Could have also opted to play the slipper on turn 2 and then turn 3 go pack leader into equip. Found a planes. 
So I'm limited to only one red mana this turn. Yeah, I guess Slipper Equip is fine, and then next turn maybe play Akiri. To get that card right away. Getting a second creature in play would help with Embercleave. Although I don't have double red yet. So I think drawing extra cards with Akiri is probably our priority. In the meantime, Brushfire Elemental is going to hit us for 3 here. Keeps up 2 mana. So they could have some instant speed removal to maybe kill our commander. But I think I'm still going for it here. And if we suspect removal on Akiri, I probably don't want to move Slipper to Akiri, because then if they kill it, I don't get to draw any cards. And I don't get to hit for the one extra damage. And if they kill Pack Leader, that's fine, I guess. Yep. Dragonfire kills Akiri. Hit for three. Next turn we can just try again. Could have also played around a 2 damage burn spell by just uh, playing my planes to potentially protect the pack leader. But that wouldn't have been the most reliable game plan for my opponent, so it seemed unlikely. Passage giving double landfall here is pretty strong. Alright, probably just going to replay Akiri here, since we really need to find double reds. Shadow Spear will be nice. Take six. All right, there's my second red source, although it's a painful one. So what's my plan? Could play Fervent Champion. Play Shadow Spear, equip Shadow Spear for free onto the Fervent Champion. Equip the slipper onto it for free, and then maybe give it flying with a guide mother. How does that sound? Alternatively, I can attack with pack leader after maybe equipping shadow spear. If they block with a lovestruck beast, I can rimrock knights. That sounds decent too. Yeah, maybe I should start there. Draw Ginger Brutes. Gain a bit of life back. And then I could keep up Akiri's ability, but I'm probably just playing the Brutes and smashing tapped and then. Next turn we can maybe Amber Cleave, which combined with a Shadow Spear is pretty strong. Ooh, a Scute Swarm. And lands number six, so they get two copies right away. Although we do have ways of flying over the 1-1 one -one tokens. Or just trampling over them. Ambush trades Akiri for the elemental. And 
and a Wings of Hubris. So what are we looking at? Akiri is too expensive to replay. Can make Ginger Root unblockable. Attack with both. Can play a 4 mana cleave on the pack leader. And take it from there. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game with Wings or Guide Mother. Yeah, I guess that's fine. One falls to five. And we can even move a bunch of equipment to Fervent Champion without having to pay any mana. Kogla is going to kill the pack leader here. But, uh, yeah, I think my opponent's still in trouble. Play Fervent Champion. Start putting equipment on it for free. And then we've got Guide Mother to give flying. And that should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Riel, the Everwise. So some sort of cycling blue-red spells deck. So they could have lots of cheap burn spells, which is not what we want to see. This hand is quite weak, since we don't have any equipment. It's pretty difficult to keep a hand without equipment in this deck. And yeah, once again, just a bunch of small creatures and... Cards that don't matter all that much in the matchup. This is better. Riel has three toughness, so probably want to keep Fire Prophecy. So I've got a difficult decision here. I can get rid of a land, which is a little greedy. But that keeps two creatures in case they kill the first one, and I want to keep the equipment, so... I think we say goodbye to... Probably Castle Ardenvale. And got rid of the castle, because we could have potentially drawn a 1-drop. And the castle would come into play tapped at the moment. Opponent with a ghostly pilfer. So that also synergizes with Ariel. I don't really want to trade my robber for the pilfer, is a thing. And I want to keep prophecy for Riel. So I think that means we just play wings and pass. Playing robber and not attacking, also an option. Opponent gonna loot with Riel essentially here. And yeah, let's just kill Riel while we can. Hopefully next turn we get to develop our own game plan. Opponent is going to draw a card. Might be able to hit them with the Relic Robber, which is always nice. And then do I keep the Smashing in hand? I don't have double red yet, so I should probably just play it tapped instead of equipping Robber here. The match could definitely come down to a bit of damage. 
in a close racing situation. Opponent can of course kill their own uh, construct tokens to prevent taking damage from them, but that's gonna use up a lot of resources, so that's not too bad for me. Take two. Maybe start by playing Akiri, see if they counter it. And then play Robber. Or I can maybe play the Maul, although it seems like they might have removal up here. So neither Maul or Akiri are enticing options. And Akiri wouldn't draw a card anyway since I don't have anything equipped. So I think Robber into Maul might still be the play. Or I guess Robber attack, see what we hit off Robber. And then maybe Akiri second main. Sure. Just hits a land. Opponent does get to draw a card from the Pilfer since we're playing something out of the command zone. So yeah, definitely not a card that you should overlook when building blue Brawl decks. Hopefully no Storm's Wraths or other Sweepers incoming. Ah, alright. <laughs> yeah, that takes care of the tokens as well. And that explains the opponent's passive play. So we gotta rebuild. Probably just play Giant and put them all of the Skyclaves on it. So it can maybe survive a burn spell. And then next turn I can play Akiri, draw a card and make the Giant indestructible if needed. Kira busts the Sea God. Okay. So, next turn they get to tap my stuff down. Although I can play the charger and maybe attack with a hasty charger still. Smashing. It's gonna trigger the giants. We'll make it indestructible. So we can play Charger. Put a Maul on it. Hit for three. And then next turn they would steal my Charger. I guess the fact that this has haste is kind of sketchy with the Kyurabas as Sea God, since then they could just uh, kill me next turn. So maybe the play should be Crystal Slipper hit for 2, then they can only hit me for 10. If I equip the Wings of Hubris, the ability is on the Wings itself, so they wouldn't be able to use it if they steal my creature that has the Wings on it. So I think we go for Slipper. Equip Charger, hit for two. And then put the wings on... Probably... The Giant here. And pass. 
and then they can steal a lethal threat at least. Alliance into Riel. And off one mind to make a token. So the plan here is going to be to put all our equipment on the charger and then use the wings of hubris to make our charger unblockable. And then the nice advantage of wings is that it also sacrifices the creature end of turn. And that's actually great with a charger, as so we'll get to deal damage to the opponent to hopefully close out the game. We picked up a Resolute Strike. I guess that helps in case my opponent has a Shock in hand, because if they try and kill my charger in response to me equipping the Mall of the Skyclaves, we can pump it in response. But I don't think it was needed to have lethal here. So yeah, we'll just equip Charger and get in there. See if my opponent has any response. And then before blocks, we can make Charger unblockable with the wings. Hit them for, I guess we can use a Resolute Strike here to pump for an additional two. Hit them for six, down to one. And opponent maybe thinks they can survive, but uh, yeah, the Wings of Hubris is gonna sacrifice my charger end of turn and that's gonna seal the deal so yeah the synergy between wings and charger here being pretty key at helping us claim another victory sweet on to the next one all right we're on the draw facing philath world sculptor so red green ramp deck and we've got an okay hand a creature and equipment or two here and a bit of interaction. Cultivate Rams the opponents. Picked up some more removal. So, I've got options. Um, could play them all of the Skyclaves on the Intimidator. Hope they don't kill it. They didn't kill it on turn two. It's pretty expensive to re-equip, but I think that's probably the play still. Could also go Wings equip, and this is a bit cheaper to move later, but doesn't hit as hard. And then next turn we can play Akiri and still have one mana available. Alright, Elder Gargroth probably is just going to eat two removal spells. These are both sorcery speed. I guess I could also play Slipper Equip, but Gargroth attacking me is also a problem. Yeah, let's just use both removal spells here. Not make it too complicated. And the flying is very relevant when it comes to the plant tokens that Philath can make. Is this a fight effect incoming, maybe? Nope, Beanstalk Giant to ramp, so they can hit me for five. A relic Axe to draw. So, probably start by playing Akiri. Leaving up white mana. A relic robber to draw. Yeah, we'll just hit for five. I could pump the intimidator, but I would rather keep up Akiri's ability here. And then 
Just play this tapped. Plays out Beanstalk Giant. Doesn't really block my Intimidator all that well. Sig 3. So we should be able to close out the game here, if I'm not mistaken. Two on Relic Axe, and then three on Akiri, and that's game. And hit for 10 in the air. Sweet. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Omnath, Locus of Creation. Definitely one of the more popular commanders out there and incredibly powerful as well. Well, we do have Hushbringer, which technically does something against Omnath. Yeah, the sand's okay. I've got some equipment, some creatures. I'll just fetch a mountain right away. Probably still start with Blade Master here. It's gonna be a Root Grazer. So next turn it could technically cast Omnath if they have like the perfect set of basic lands in hand. Which is a little bit unlikely. So don't know if I need to prioritize getting the Hushbringer in play just yet. Otherwise, more of the Skyclaves on Blade Master is kind of nice. I guess I should maybe play it safe. I can attack. If they block, I can shock. Opponent takes it. And then we'll just go Hushbringer into Kite Sail. There's islands, so yeah, I mean, it's possible they get to play Omnath here. They had the perfect basic lands, but at least we prevent a card draw with Hushbringer. Probably a good window for Akiri, since I want to draw more lands. This is kind of like a land, but now Omnath is going to do Omnath things. Garruk's Uprising draws a card. And a ram through. Pretty good with the Uprising as well. And very quickly, we're starting to fall further and further behind. Suppose I could Amber Cleave this turn. Although, maybe I want to get the Maul in play before Amber Cleave, so we get to hit for a little bit more. So this turn, I could go Signet into Maul. And probably equip Hushbringer. Root Grazer puts land in play to gain 4. Yeah, the combo of Root Grazer plus Omnath is a nice one. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. Luckily doesn't trigger off Hushbringer. So they don't get to draw the card with Uprising. And it will also prevent the Terror of the Peaks from killing my stuff. So Hushbringer definitely keeping us in the game. Root Grazer puts land in play. And a great henge. 
it's a pretty good one too. So what are we doing this turn? I can attack and Ember Cleave. If they block Blade Master, I can still shock the Tower of the Peaks. Yeah, I guess that's a good starting point. And if they take it, I still just Ember Cleave the Hushbringer. So our opponents gaining 6 life per turn on average. So it's going to be difficult to make a dent in their life total. <laughs> well, Uro is pretty good against uh, Hushbringer as it just gets to stay in play now as a 6-6. Although at least we didn't trigger the Great Henge. So, yeah, all the cards that are terrorizing standards showing up in Brawl as well. So I suppose we can play Akiri. Start drawing some cards. Then probably just play this tapped. So we're still in the game for sure. Although my opponent's gonna get to draw with Uro. And potentially snowball card advantage. So I'm taking 15. A Royal Eruption. So let's see. If my opponent has a land in hand, they could still gain four of the Root Grazer. So let's put them at a virtual 22 life. Don't think I can deal 22 damage here. Put Shadow Spear on Akiri is maybe a good starting point. As that'll also give a double strike. So we've got 8, plus 8, 16, plus another 5 is, uh, I mean, yeah, we could maybe get there. Let's attack. Roiling Regrowth. So that's gonna gain 4 life, essentially. So if they don't block with a Root Grazer, there's a chance that they just die. Falls to six. And yeah, the hazard that we drew is actually gonna make the difference here. Wow. Three, two, and one. Wow, you can't write this stuff. What an incredible game. And yeah, Hushbringer definitely carried us pretty hard that game. Otherwise, the Great Henge and Garruk's Uprising and Terror of the Peaks would have completely destroyed us. So that was a pretty epic finale for today's Brawl video. So I definitely think our deck overperformed in the games I recorded today, since in some of the practice games things didn't always go so smoothly, and drawing the right mix of creatures and equipment doesn't always work perfectly. 
So definitely not the best Brawl deck out there, but it is a lot of fun to play, and it's kind of a unique playstyle having to play with all these equipment, as opposed to a classic aggro deck. And like I mentioned in the introduction, if you do get tired of Akiri as your commander, you can always swap it out with Nahiri. And then I don't think you need to change too many cards in the main deck. Maybe you can play the War Leader, the three mana Lord that bumps Warriors, as it synergizes well with the 1-1 tokens from Nahiri. That's definitely a card I would consider bringing in, but there's not too many other cards I would change around. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.